The U.S. Commerce Department cracking down on sales of some chips, chip-making equipment, and related software to China. Those restrictions were pared down from earlier drafts of the rules. Joining us right now to talk tech is Ray Wong. He is Constellation Research founder, chairman, and principal analyst. And good morning, Ray. Good morning. How you doing? Good. Very good. Uh, good to be back after a wonderful holiday. Hey, let, let's talk a little bit about these uh, new rules this morning. Um, tough rules, but watered down from what we'd anticipated before. What's the impact on these stocks? Well, it's a slight sigh of relief, right? These are going after memory chips, uh, not the traditional AI chips that we've been trying to go after in the past. Uh, it's really because advanced weapon systems in China are going to depend on it. It's the high, high bandwidth memory chips uh, that they're targeting. So these are companies that have basically been producing, you know, the, the guts and the memory that actually happens inside computers uh, and actually the ability to actually move that information around. And these high bandwidth memory chips are really driving, you know, the ability to actually build really sophisticated weapon systems. And I think that's really why Synthesis and other folks are targeting this uh, in terms of uh, as a national security issue. Um, but, you know, everything we're trying to do to slow China down does give them more incentive to try to rebuild uh, their capabilities. And we'll see if they kind of, sip, you know, end up in the Middle East somewhere where the transactions occur and they get the chips and then they try to reverse engineer everything, which is what's been going on with the AI chips and other chip technologies. Some of the headlines today suggest that these tool controls that are being added to this uh, could impact some other companies like an ASML Holdings. Uh, I think they've also got companies like LAM Research and Applied Materials on that list. Do you uh, have the, share those same concerns or was this baked in? Um, it was baked in. I think people were expecting it and people were surprised that there was such a loophole going on for quite some time. Uh, and now that you know, there's these restrictions in place. I think people have a better understanding what the game's going to look like for the next four years, uh, especially uh, in, in a Trump presidency. What, what do you think of the chip makers over the next year, let's say, because we have seen a slowdown in the phenomenal growth that we experienced prior to the last couple of months in this sector? Well, it well, the chip makers typically have boom and bust cycles, right? And we've got this big boom and bust cycle that's been going on for a while, um, but it's really because of AI. And so the macro is AI, and AI moves from chips to hyperscalers, like I'm here at the AWS reInvent show today, to software vendors, to real businesses. And we're going to see that big shift. So we'll see a rotation uh, in the next 6 to 12 months out of chips from NVIDIA and TSMC to software companies that are actually delivering on AI. And that's why the Palantirs, that's why you'll see some things in C3 AI. You're going to see other companies where that piece is going to play a big role. It also is part of the run-up on the Apple side because they're actually putting the AI into use and people are starting to see how that AI is working, good or bad, depending on how people you know, are reacting to some of the upgrades. The, the huge push that we've seen in AI, is that something that's going to lift all boats or is this really just a case of there's going to be real winners who have the chips you want and everybody else who doesn't? So this is the challenge with AI. It is, as I said before in the past, it is opposite of the internet. The internet was decentralized. It was open. There were lots of players. Prices were coming down. Well, what we have in this AI revolution is there are a few winners, right? You end up with closed systems. It's you've got uh, situations where everything's costing more. And more importantly, uh, this is going to be one of those situations where you don't have the open systems that are needed. So we need a lot more competition in AI. And hopefully that's going to change with, you know, you saw the investment this morning uh, where, you know, Jeff Bezos is like backing the chip manufacturers, you know, in Korea to actually compete against uh, NVIDIA. Right. You're going to see more and more of the companies uh, that are buying lots of chips from NVIDIA try to invest in alternatives because they don't want one winner or a winner takes all market does, in terms of their supplier that, base either. Does that tick off NVIDIA and do they then as a result stop giving as many chips to those companies that are now looking for, uh, you know, other competitors to go along the way? Because those big buyers have been the ones who have been able to really uh, sh shepherd a lot of the chips that are coming out. They're able to pay the big bucks right now. What, what does that mean? No, Becky, that's a great question. And I think the order books are out for the next 18 to 24 months. So it's about a two-year buffer NVIDIA has, but there's also the shift, right? These companies aren't going to keep buying those data center chips at that rate. Uh, they're going to need other alternatives. And what you're going to see is, you know, the shift to sovereign AI, countries that actually have to deliver AI at scale to their citizens, because this isn't something that any country can just pick up and do. Uh, and smaller countries and smaller companies that don't have that capital investment are going to have to, like, build up uh, that consolidated uh, purchase towards AI capabilities. And then after that, we'll have to see what happens. But that's like 48 months out in terms of any projections. 
Ray, we've got to run, but I know you think that M&A activity is going to increase um, with the Trump administration coming in and maybe some changes in the regulatory oversight. Any names that you would be watching for potential plays in M&A right now? Well, we saw what happened with Adobe Figma in the past and how those were blocked. But there are a lot of companies that are waiting for the M&As, but it's not in the big M&As. It's also the small ones and really creating the IPO pipeline. And so you'll see a bunch of IPOs open up, which will actually create categories. So when Stripe opens up or Databricks opens up, you're going to see some big piling in in terms of banks being willing to jump in and also tech companies that are trying to uh, make some acquisitions to actually bolster where they are. So Google and Amazon and Microsoft all have been held back because they haven't been able to make those acquisitions.